So I'll introduce the next speaker, Sandro Betin, who will speak on quantum modular forms of non-zero weight. But just give, let me first point out, there's, a, I've been told there's a gizmo in front of your uh, spot, in front of your seat. And will you please press it till the two little red lights show when you're going to ask the question, because they want to record your important question for posterity. Thanks, Sandra. Please go ahead. Okay, so thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be back in Montreal. I've had amazing here. Uh, years here, which were very influential in my career so with Andrew and his postdoc students and so on has been a great place. So I want also well to thank and say something more nice about Andrew that um, something that uh, Eunice said uh, recently was really resonating with me that uh, uh, that he said that he always felt that uh, Andrew was always uh, able to help and support students and postdoc even much after they had finished and discreetly sometimes. And I definitely felt it uh, many times. So thank you. So, um, so this is a joint work with uh, Sari Drapon and uh, it's kind of uh, build, uh, talking about some building some uh, instrument that uh, uh, are, um, are needed, for example, to prove distribution results that he was discussing. So uh, quantum modular forms, Sari gave very quickly the definition. So I'll just I'll say it again. Uh, so basically there are uh, functions that uh, so defined on the rationals. Uh, uh, so here I will very often be a bit sloppy. I mean, often they're not defined on all rationals, but uh, you might have to replace, to remove some points and maybe even more than one. And uh, uh, so they're, they're satisfied. They, modularity relations of uh, um, the uh, well, standard modular forms, but uh, where instead of being actually zero, they have some sort of uh, H gamma function here. And the point is that the starting uh, function, typically I don't know, the chaotic function maybe on the rationals and uh, the uh, resulting function on the right for every gamma is uh, um, a, a function that has some conti more continuity properties. Okay, so we'll, uh, and of course, well, I mean, if F was, has the same analytic property to start with continuity property, then of course H would, excluding perhaps one extra point. So this is more interested if, uh, interesting if F has less continuity property than H, of course. So we'll talk about uh, the case of level one. And so with Sai and you only, we are, starting to consider more the uh, case of uh, uh, level different than one. And if the level is one, you just need to check uh, for gamma ray two generators. And uh, which kind of means, uh, okay, I guess I sent an uncompiled version. So this is uh, f of x minus f of x plus one equal uh, um, h of uh, t of x. So this one is of course for, well, this would be for t. Um, and uh, meaning, uh, well, okay, this is one relation and this is the second relation. But in fact, uh, in basically all the examples, the function is periodic. So uh, the first relation, the first H is very much uh, regular. So it's a constant zero function. So F will be periodic, sometimes actually twisted periodic, but we'll get into that. And so since there is basically only one function to care about, so we'll drop the um, S here, and this will be H of X, this function. And K here is the weight. Okay, so I'll give many examples, two of weight zero and uh, uh, one of positive weight and one of negative weight. There are many, many more examples. I mean, to some extent, modular symbols, uh, some other cotangent sums uh, and, uh, uh, well, uh, I had a list in my mind now is all eluding, but there are a lot of examples of this, of this quantum modular form. Zagir brought a paper about it with many examples, but there are actually many more. And uh, uh, the first known example is uh, the Dedekind sum, which is defined uh, like this. You split A and Q, meaning they don't go together. So this would be discontinuous. Um, and uh, this double bracket is just the fractional power minus one half. And it satisfied this uh, formula, this reciprocity formula, where h of x would be this one. 
here you have an extra correction term depending on the number uh, numerator and denominator, but it's not really important. You, if you remove uh, like one over 12, uh, a, a bar over Q, where A is the multiplicative inverse of, um, over Q, of A over Q, you can actually remove this. And, uh, but the classical definition was this one. So this is the formula for that. So this is the graph of uh, S of A over Q. And there's a graph for, of course, some sampling point, because actually, if you consider the limit for A over Q going to any points, you can kind of see that it's going to go to infinity at any, at any point. So it's uh, going to look very much like a cloud. Um, OK, so this is actually, I think, Kickerson proved that, uh, well, it's not difficult, but that is dense on the on the plane, the, the image. Um, OK, so this is uh, one example. The second example is one that uh, Sari mentioned, is you take the reasonable zeta function square with this tau of n over n to the s, and you add uh, an additive uh, character here. So you break the multiplicativity. Uh, e of nx, of course, is e to the 2 pi i nx. And uh, uh, so if x is rational, you can continue this to the complex plane. And you can ask what happened on the central value. And this is related to actually twisted second moment of the Richelieu function. And what I had proved uh, some years ago is that uh, it satisfied the residual positive relation of weight 0 here, like the Redekin sum, where this h function is uh, not a polynomial, like for a Redekin sum, but uh, a holder continuous function. OK, and here it's a graph which looks kind of similar to, to the one before, but you can, uh, these uh, spikes are going more like one over square root of X than like one over X in the previous example. So this is the imaginary part, but okay, the real part will look very similar. Okay, so this is the second example. The third example is a very funny example, which is the Konsevich function. And uh, uh, the, um, well, the guest studied it uh, quite a bit in uh, a paper and, and um, I mean, basically, you can see it as a generating series of certain numbers that well, have several applications, but it's very far from what I do, so I'm not really sure. And uh, it's defined like that, and uh, it's a funny function. Well, okay, if you want, you can take uh, x to have positively. Um, well, okay, no, let's, uh, let's keep that, but okay. Um, if you take x uh, to be rational, then uh, this uh, product here is actually going to be zero for m uh, uh, greater than the denominator. So this is actually a finite sum. And the, this satisfies also the reciprocity relation, but well, there are some twists, but OK, it's not really a big deal. So if, well, it's twisted periodic. This is uh, 24 root of unity. And uh, um, uh, also the other relation is twisted by this same theta to the plus minus 3, depending on the sine of x. And this function here on the right is uh, um, real analytic in this case. And uh, okay, so the weight here is positive, three half is positive. And the uh, graph here looks uh, very different from uh, the graph before. There is no more, uh, um, uh, well, all these uh, uh, things going to infinity looks a bit, uh, well, much more chaotic. Uh, so this is the real part. But, uh, and if you plot the imaginary part will be the same. And uh, if you actually plot the real part and imaginary part, instead of, uh, this is A over P, K of A over P real part. If you instead plot real part and imaginary part together, you will instead see some structure. It looks like, uh, well, these are actually, the, the, uh, you can see 3000 here, 3000 here. I should have plotted it uh, with the same scale. So this looked more like a circle, but okay. Um, and uh, okay, so there are actually it seems like many circles one inside the other, and this is because sometimes more is not better, because uh, here, for example, well, I've been always plotting varying both a and p, but if you fix p, is actually look a bit better. Well, it looks much more like a circle, and uh, well, like a <laughs> ellipse in this case. But uh, um, and we'll get back into this what's happening with this function. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the third example. And this is an example instead of uh, also by Zagel on uh, um, negative weight. So you take uh, all uh, uh, quadratic polynomial of a fixed discriminant congruent to one mod four, an odd integer k, and you sum uh, over, well, there is also negative leading coefficient. 
that's another uh, condition. And you sum Q of X, X irrational, and uh, um, over all the Q of the, over all the Qs, we are summing over Q, such that Q of X is greater than zero. So uh, this is actually again a finite sum. Uh, there are only finitely many quadratic functions that appear for X rational. For X irrational instead, it would typically be or always be, I think, uh, infinitely many. And this satisfy uh, also a, um, a reciprocity formula is periodic and satisfy a reciprocity formula where this one is a polynomial of size 2K. Okay, here it is 2K, so the weight is minus 2K. And if you plot the graph, this is for four values of K, you see now something very different from the previous examples. You see, well, a constant, which is not trivial by the way. I mean, it's not difficult, but to show that this is actually always constant for every rational if you, if you take K equal three and also for K equal one actually. And uh, it uh, some, looks something that is smooth with the other functions. Well, and uh, well, it's, in fact, it's not smooth. Uh, um, what uh, um, Zagier proved is that is, uh, um, well, with, um, yes, sorry, uh, it should be uh, of, uh, um, I think is differentiable uh, uh, K uh, times, I think, if I did K minus one times, if I define things like that. And uh, uh, the way he proved this, one can also do it directly from the definition, so it's much more complicated. The way he proved it is by showing that this, uh, this function here is uh, uh, essentially uh, the high clear integral of certain modular form evaluated at rational and this uh, a convergent Fourier series. So it's continuous and uh, it's, uh, I mean, it will have a power of like, and, over k over two once normal and over k here once normalized so uh, it will make things uh, continuous and differentiable this many times so he has this proof of it okay so um, okay I should maybe go a bit faster but um, okay so these are the two uh, relations in general. And you, this one, you can think of it in terms of the Gauss sum. Sorry, I mentioned this the other day. So f of x minus x to minus k, this is, well, maybe if you assume k and f are even, just to not worry about all the signs, but it's really relevant. Uh, this is f of t of x, where t is the Gauss sum. So fractional part of one over x, because f is periodic. So f of one over x is f of fractional part of one over x. And if you iterate it, you get this sort of formula. And until uh, you keep going, until this terminates. So at some point, the R of X will be zero. R is essentially the length of the continuous fractionless function of X. And from this, you can see that uh, whether K is zero, positive or negative, it makes uh, a big difference in, uh, in uh, the way this thing behaves because uh, T of X is between zero and one, but uh, uh, two consecutive uh, T of X, like for example, T X, T square of X, is actually less or equal than one half. So uh, if K is, for example, is negative, then this minus K is positive. So this one uh, will uh, uh, go um, fast to zero, exponentially fast to zero. Whereas if K is positive, then this will be exponentially, will go exponentially fast to uh, infinity. And uh, if K is zero, of course, this is not there. So it's very, there are very, three very different cases depending on the values of K. So if k is zero, then uh, well, it's much simpler the formula, at least well, assuming even and so on. Well, k is equals zero is even. Um, but uh, um, and this one is basically just uh, evaluate f is, can be thought of evaluating uh, uh, the function h at uh, uh, the the sequence of uh, t j of x. And so there is all these dynamical system methods that can tell you what happened to, to this function f of x as x varies. So um, if h was piecewise constant and uh, in certain, well, in one over n, n plus one, there is this work of Baladi and Valle that studied this. And uh, we started, we extended this with two older continuous function on these intervals and so on. And one uh, can uh, uh, arrive to this theorem, which says that, uh, if you, if you want to look how this f of x are distributed, uh, if you vary the x among rational fixed denominator, oh, sorry, of denominator of 2q, as good q goes to infinity, this one become distributed according to some stable law under a very mild hypothesis. 
and uh, h could also go to infinity at zero. And depending on how it goes to infinity, this, you have different stable laws. If it's bounded or if it doesn't grow too much, this will converge to a Gaussian actually. So, so this one is now clear, this weight zero. The weight known zero, it's, uh, we started actually on a one page appendix in, the, in, our, uh, in that paper. And we said, okay, maybe we should expand it. And once we actually started fixing the details because everything was very sketchy, we realized that things were much more complicated. Now it's getting to a 30 plus pages paper. <laughs> uh, so and there are definitely a lot of things to be said. So, okay, if K is less than zero, we said this one is positive. So this is exponentially, converges exponentially fast. So in fact, you can even define this at the real. This uh, is a convergence series to just, uh, T of X is never zero. So you just keep going. And uh, this one you just remove or you think of the denominator to be infinity. So this is zero. And you have this formula and this formula converges for all X. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, this, the fact that it's converges for X with this definition immediately gives, if uh, for example, H is bounded that uh, um, this, uh, this will be actually this function defined like this, F triangle will be um, continuous at all irrational number. And uh, um, you can uh, uh, work out what happened in rational, so it's a computation, not too difficult. And you can see that uh, at rational number X, the right and left limit are, well, the original value of the function, plus uh, or minus, depending on the side, um, these, uh, uh, well, no, sorry. Uh, okay, sorry, yes, plus uh, uh, this thing here. Okay, maybe uh, it's probably plus or minus. Um, and uh, H zero minus, so if H zero minus F of zero is zero, so this is actually zero. So the function is continuous. So if H of zero is equal to F of zero, this function here is actually a continuous function. And H of zero equal to F of zero, if you go back to the, uh, to the definition here, it kind of means that this formula also holds at zero. If, for example, you assume f doesn't grow too much, f of zero, this zero to the minus k, minus k is positive, so this is also zero. So you can think of this zero, f of zero equal h of zero. So in that case, uh, this function, you can define it also like this. It's the same function as before, or you can define it as the limit, just the same thing. This function is continuous. So it's uh, different from the case uh, k equals zero, uh, if uh, you have a quantum modular form, uh, it's already automatically for k uh, negative, um, you, it has to have some continuity property to start with. It uh, cannot be very chaotic. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, with a longer computation, um, one can actually show that uh, if h is smooth, for example, then uh, uh, or well, if it if it is differentiable at least k over two times, then actually this uh, f function will be differentiable. Well, the integer part of k over well, uh, up, uh, um, for the greatest integer below k over two. So this one assuming uh, uh, h of zero equal f of zero, and uh, so. This gives a proof that doesn't have anything to do with modular forms uh, of uh, uh, the result by Zaghi that uh, that uh, quadratic sum uh, was uh, continuous and differentiable exactly uh, k minus one, uh, sorry, yes, k, um, k minus one times. And this is exactly equivalent. Uh, this is follows here much more generally. So it was not uh, by chance that the function of Zaghi was automatic by, by the fact that it was, uh, a quantum modular form. Okay, so the proof, uh, uh, well, it's a computation to prove that it is differentiable, it's longer computation, and then one can use some sort of inductive argument uh, differentiating this function once you know it's, it's differentiable and, it, and the derivative will become a quantum modular form or weight minus k minus, uh, minus k plus two, and, uh, and one can iterate. So this is uh, what I was saying. Okay, so if k is greater than zero, then uh, of, um, look, things look a bit more complicated because uh, um, this is, uh, um, well, going to infinity. But in fact, if you express this uh, 
in terms of a, a, a x bar, so where x bar is a p bar over q, p again is the multiplicative inverse of p modulo q. So this function here, uh, this product here, actually have a nice expression in terms of continuous fraction expansion of x bar. So this you can rewrite this in this way, where these one are the partial denominator of x bar. In particular, if something, um, if you don't move much from h bar, the uh, the partial denominator do not change. So the first few ones, sorry. And so this actually function on the right is a, a continuous function of, uh, um, well, you, um, also at rational, it's a continuous function of h bar, x bar, sorry. So um, if uh, h is bounded. So you don't even need each continuous like before. If H is bounded, this function defined as before, but now we are moving on X bar is uh, automatically continuous without any other, um, any other uh, hypothesis. And in fact, it's the holder continuous almost everywhere. And if K is greater than two, it has the derivative zero almost everywhere. So again, uh, if K is positive also in this case, uh, the quantum modular form cannot be too chaotic. They are uh, um, they are uh, continuous to start with. You just need to do a change of variable x into x bar, and you get something that is continuous. And uh, well, if it's uh, twisted, if there are some twists, you just need to oops, to uh, make some minor modification. For the concept function, the corollary is that this function here is continuous, so it's almost uh, the conservative function at uh, x bar, you just need to add uh, this uh, a 24 root of unity in front. And this uh, phase here is sigma of x is the, the alternating uh, sum of the digits of the continued fraction expansion. This is actually the character, the multiplier appearing uh, for the Dedekind eta function. This is actually a known function. And uh, well, if you remove this, you're just kind of have 24 different continuous function. So um, yeah, so this is the graph of uh, k of x uh, with uh, x bar instead of uh, x, what k of x bar basically, something at uh, rational point. And if again, if you remove this one, it's not that uh, uh, k of x by itself will look very chaotic. You just have uh, 24 of these functions, not just uh, not just one. And uh, um, okay, this is uh, the real part and the imaginary part, or vice versa, I don't remember. And uh, going back, so this is uh, again the plot on the complex plane. So this is the well, actually, the real part is vertical here. So the uh, the plot of real part of k and imaginary part of k put together, you see some this fractal structure. This is uh, for k bar over a over p, and this looks very funny, but this uh, looks uh, very much like, uh, if you look very far, like a piece of a circle, in fact. And uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't remove the uh, e over um, e over sigma x over 24, I was saying you have 24 different continuous function and uh, they actually, uh, well, uh, unsurprisingly, they all attach each other. And this is the circle that uh, one was starting to see before. And uh, its color correspond to a different uh, to the different uh, uh, piece. Uh, well, to the different root of unity. And okay, there are some random points around, but that's just computation uh, that's, that with small values started being a bit uh, well all over the place. Okay, so this is uh, well. Okay, so basically, the corollary of uh, the theorem is that this function here is actually continuous. It has a fractal fractal-like structure, but it's actually continuous. Okay, so um, okay, let me see how much time I have. I have a little bit of time. Um, so we actually prove also the, uh, we consider the convergence in distribution. Uh, so what happened to this F of A over Q as uh, A and Q by? Well, actually for Q fixed differently from the case K equals zero, we can fix Q and uh, uh, we have to normalize the, if k is uh, uh, well greater than zero. So um, this one, well, okay, so just uh, an observation. If you have f of a over q and f of a bar over q, this doesn't change. 
uh, because well, uh, a bar uh, goes over all the uh, co-prime residues. So these uh, um, converge to the push forward of uh, the corresponding continuous function with the triangle on the right and the left, depending if k is positive or negative. So this is not so difficult to prove this first part here. And uh, it uh, generalizes uh, um, um, some work uh, by, my, well, it's not general, but um, some work by myself uh, and by, uh, well, before by Rushes and Meyer on uh, a certain contingent function, but this is way more general and uh, it doesn't use all the property uh, that were heavily used in that case. Um, okay, so what is more complicated uh, uh, at least in uh, um, the case uh, um, k greater than zero, is uh, that it is, uh, the distribution function, this push forward, um, um, the cumulative distribution function is continuous. So you have to assume a little bit more on H. So if k is less than zero, you have to assume that H is real analytic. So we, so we could prove it only if H is real analytic. And uh, if uh, a, a k is greater than zero, where we were assuming only H bounded before, now we have to assume H is continuous. And in fact, uh, we can see that uh, uh, this is not really a, a, I mean, H continuous, for example, for K less than zero, um, the result would be false. So the cumulative distribution function can be um, non-continuous if uh, uh, H is only continuous. So yes, we couldn't prove it for uh, all the H function that we consider, but there is also a reason. So uh, I have uh, a proof of it, but uh, I think I don't have time to say it, but uh, well, only on one case, the, the, the easy case. So instead I'll conclude by just showing some picture of just uh, because there are some funny objects and different quantum modular forms. So this is a cotangent sum that uh, I introduced with Brian, some, Brian Corey some years ago. And uh, this zeta here is the Hurwitz zeta function. And for a equal to minus one, well, this has a pole, but they will all cancel. And uh, this is the, the well, the, the pole, polar term will cancel. And this is the direct in sum actually, maybe up to a constant. And uh, um, for equal, uh, instead zero, this becomes basically cotangent. And this, uh, the, um, sorry, this become a fractional part. And this is basically the function was the cotangent sum I was mentioning about before. And here instead, there is something funny happening. Uh, I took uh, some uh, values on the one half line. So here zeta is computed, zeta is the Hurwitz zeta function, not the Riemann zeta function. It's computed in minus a, so on the minus one half line actually. And uh, uh, well, these are a bunch of graph of uh, the real part of this for several values of a over q. So they look uh, again a bit uh, fractal-like, and in fact, uh, from our theorem, it follows that uh, these are continuous at uh, totally rationals with jumps uh, at rationals instead, and uh, they are all uh, actually at their one quarter order continuous, one quarter minus epsilon order continuous at all irrational, which is maybe not so clear from the pictures, and the picture will look uh, all a bit uh, well, somewhat similar, somewhat different. And uh, there are some that are uh, a bit uh, uh, funnier than other. So this 14 one is a bit different. And uh, uh, this 21 is also a bit different. This 25 is also a bit different. And uh, well, I guess this 33, the 30 and more, it's uh, kind of a, um, it's like a different than the other one maybe it's not, I mean, they look all kind of similar, maybe twisted on one side. And maybe someone that uh, is very much into the Riemann function will maybe have a guess. And uh, what are these values? These are, well, uh, integer close to zeros of the Riemann zeta functions. So if uh, A is a zero of the Riemann zeta function, actually, um, the, well, what happened is the period function, the H function, um, stop having uh, a singularity at zero. So this actually doesn't satisfy the hypothesis of the theorem because, uh, it, uh, but we, we can still work in much more generality, including these functions. And in that case, for uh, if A is exactly a value of the Riemann zeta function, then uh, well, you have these, all these graphs. These are the first nine zeros of the Riemann zeta function. 
and uh, becomes a three quarter holder continuous almost everywhere actually instead of uh, one quarter so there is something funny happening at zero which is absolutely not clear because but this minus a first is not on the one half line it's the minus one half line and these are curvy data function so there is something hap funny happening over there so i think my time is finished i have since it's Andrew's 60th birthday i have uh, also the plot for the 60th zeros which will look very funny and see how how these things will converge if you take uh, a lot of points and so this is the plot for the 60th zeros <laughs> <laughs> You left them speechless. Yes. So this, last thing. this one. <laughs> yeah, so, so you're saying this is on the minus half line. Yes. Zero and a half line somehow forces the problem. Yes. Well, I mean, I don't know why, but uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, I mean, well, I, I I mean, if you can, does if you can prove something, does it count like you know why? Or <laughs> if you can prove something, does it count as you know why? Or it doesn't count. I mean, I can prove it. I mean, the the point is that basically um, this uh, uh, the the function h has a polar term of size zeta of uh, one minus a basically. So zeta of uh, one minus rho, of course, is uh, sorry. Well, no, because a is one half. So one minus a is uh, is uh, well, one minus rho is also zero. So the, basically, uh, the polar term would cancel, and uh, you get you gain some continuity properties uh, like that. So, I mean, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm not. Well, okay, it's basically coming from that. It's absolutely unclear how to see it from from this definition. Why? Uh, a being a zero of zeta would make any difference. So. You said that the equidistribute uniformly with respect to some measure. Yes. Which is not a big measure, but. Yes, the push for, but it's basically this function uh, f, uh, well, that part is not very difficult to prove, but it's not absolutely not obvious, but it's not difficult. Um, so basically, this f more or less continues, I mean, to a, a continuous function. F at rational. So uh, the computing F at uh, random rational is essentially the same as computing the stenting function at the random real in the same uh, uh, in the same uh, part. So it, you can prove it through. You have to basically you have to control how often uh, some uh, uh, continuous fraction term are large, uh, partial coefficient, and then. Uh, but do you actually? Uh, close formulas. Uh, um, well, I mean, you can write in the term of uh, the continuous fraction expansion, so you can uh, you can compute it very fast at every precision, but it doesn't converge to something. Uh, I mean, these theorems are completely very generic. I mean, so maybe in some special case, but for the cotangent function case, for example, that's one of the cases where it does have another nicer looking uh, expression, the the resulting function, but. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, this is uh, Zagir's fault. Uh, yeah, this so, is for grant application. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Zagir gave this name. And uh, uh, um, so the explanation he gave, because there are some, I didn't mention them, but there are some uh, um, quantum invariants, I mean, some. Uh, um, quantum invariance of uh, knots basically that are uh, uh, quantum well, that are quant that are modular form in this sense and since uh, he found them uh, the most interesting of them uh, he said okay let's call them all quantum modular form that's his explanation post question yes yes, yes. yes. <laughs> i mean uh, i can just uh, assume that uh, some very mild hypothesis, then we would call them quantum post uh, modular. Form. I, yes, I think we're on the break already. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks again. Yeah.